Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is the second part of Blogify. This is a application we are uh, building in order to get familiar with Tailwind CSS and uh, Sanity. Okay, so this is the last part, uh, I mean the first part of our application, uh, which is the last part uh, I've been uploading on the YouTube. So um, now, this is the main situation of our program. As you can see here, we have this login via Google, which does nothing. So uh, what we are going to do in here is basically implement a method in order to go ahead and make this login button actually work. And we want to make the user to log into uh, Google. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is to add an unclick property to this button which is going to be this render props which again is going to be render props okay great now the next thing we're going to do is to find out what this client id is okay great now let's go to google cloud console i will uh, provide this link down below in the description for you guys and whenever you are signed in in your Google account and then uh, you can go to console cloud and in here we're going to select a project um, actually we're going to create a new project so in here uh, we're going to name it Blogify YouTube tutorial you can name it whatever you want then I'm going to hit create Whenever the project is created, you will have this uh, great notification like these two projects. So as you can see here, the project is created and we are being redirected to the uh, dashboard of this project. Okay, great. Now in here, what are we going to do? First of all, we're going to go to API and services and we're going to set up a OAuth consent screen. Okay. So what is this OAuth consent stream? You'll see that, as you can see here, first of all, we're gonna set the user type to be external. Then what I am going to do here is to show you what is this consent screen. And this is the consent screen. Do you remember uh, whenever you want to uh, sign into a website using Google, uh, you can see something like this. You can see a model which pops up and uh, you can see a layout like this this is the consent screen okay great now in here I'm gonna name my app name as Blogify user support email is this email you can uh, choose yours then app logo can be uh, nothing at the moment app domain leave them alone and in here I'm gonna provide the same Gmail okay great now let's save and continue we don't need these scopes at the moment as well as the test users we don't need them and now we can go ahead and click on back to dashboard okay great now in here what I'm going to do is to publish the app I'm gonna hit confirm and uh, that's it okay great now after we do this we're gonna go to credentials okay now in here we're gonna set up our credentials which you are seeing right now okay so in here I'm gonna hit create credentials OAuth client ID this OAuth client ID we are getting is gonna use the OAuth consent screen so um, it's crucial in order to create this credential and use this credential which is this client id first set up the oauth consent screen okay great so the application type is going to be a web app now after we've done this these things will pop up and uh, these are ready to change now in here i'm going to say http sorry localhost colon 3000 and then I'm gonna hit create that's it now we can use this client ID 
in order to sign in to Google inside our application. But we can we can go with this option. We can paste it right here. We could do this, but a better way is to get rid of this and create inside client create a .env file, which is about our private client ID, uh, keys, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So in here, whatever you want to store is going to be start with React app and then whatever you want. So I'm in, in our case, I'm going to say React app client or I better say Google auth client ID, which is going to be equal to this string we are receiving inside our Google console, which is our client ID. And then after that, we're going to provide this .env file inside login. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to say process .env dot and then the name of our private key we're going to provide. Okay, great. But in order for this to work, I'm going to stop the app and start it again which basically means I'm going to restart app. So whenever you change an environment variable, whenever you delete one, you add one, you update one, or all that kind of stuff, you're going to want to restart your application for it to work. Okay, great. So now I'm going to say npm start, and there we go. Okay, great. Now our app is ready to use, and we can now... Uh, use our button in order to basically log in to Google using this uh, OAuth constant screen we just created. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, guys, so one rookie mistake I did is to just use the, this render props. In here, uh, actually on GitHub Copilot, I got the suggestion on using this unclick property, but I thought it's a silly one and I actually didn't notice that, okay? So in here, anyway, we were gonna want to use this unclick and in here, I'm gonna say disabled. So now let's go ahead and test it out. As you can see here, okay? And now we are logged in because uh, basically I just have one Gmail account on this browser. So in here, if I go to console, as you can see here, we have a bunch of uh, objects and objects and all that kind of information, which is great, which means we successfully get the information of the user's account. And now we may use it in order to uh, make a login and logout um, logic in our application okay so let's go ahead and do that in here what i'm going to do is to say uh, window dot session storage sorry session storage dot set item now in here what i'm going to do first of all in here i'm going to say user and then i'm going to pass in result Actually, let's say JSON dot string file, and then pass in result dot profile. Oops, object. Okay, great. What we are going to do here is to set a key value per with the key of user and the value of this result dot profile object. I mean this profile object which exists inside this object which is exactly this result inside of this user key okay so this is the value and this is the user and we're gonna set all of these inside our session storage which is exactly in the storage and then inside of this session storage okay great now let's rerun our application let's go ahead and log in via Google now, as you can see here, we have this user, which is great. So the key is user, and then the value is going to be like so. Google ID, image URL, then I have name, and email, and given name, 
and everything which is basically inside of that uh, profile object you're receiving from Google okay that's great now how can we basically uh, implement a great uh, logging and logout logic okay so let's go in here first of all in here what we are going to do I'm gonna make a copy out of this button and copy that right away okay so first of all in here I'm gonna say log out which is uh, a function we're gonna create in here I'm gonna say this uh, let's first implement logout so in here I'm gonna say const logout is equal to a function an inline function which is going to say window.session storage dot um, remove item of user okay so it's going to uh, make these everything we're gonna save on the session storage remove them it's going to make them disappear from here okay great so this is our logout okay nice now when as you can see here we have this login by Google and we have this login by Google so we have two of them in here I'm gonna say instead of this I'm gonna say logout I'm gonna get rid of this FC Google icon so as you can see here this is my logout and then what I am going to do in here is very interesting so I'm gonna pass in a disabled property to this disabled actually so in here I'm gonna say if user login user login go ahead and make it true and if not go ahead and make it false okay so what is this user login it's simply oops a use state so I'm gonna say user logged in and set user logged in and in here I'm gonna use use state and I'm gonna set it to false or uh, basically uh, at the moment I'm gonna set it to false okay now let's import this use state from here from react there we go or I, a better option is to save it as null okay then what I am going to do I'm going to say inside of a use effect which means whenever this page is going to run for the first time in here I'm going to import use effect as well in here I'm going to say whenever the app runs for the first time or this page runs for the first time go ahead and check if the user let's just get rid of github copilot for now uh, go ahead and check if the user is logged in okay so I'm gonna say window oops dot uh, session storage dot get item of user it's going to be equal to this user object so I'm gonna say if user exists go ahead and set user login to true and if the user does not exist go ahead and set user login to false okay great now we have this logout we have this login and that's great okay so in here uh, we actually don't need this disabled okay we're gonna implement some styles so this inside the style on display I'm gonna say uh, let's say basically if the user logged in go ahead and set this to uh, nothing and if the user is not logged in set it to none okay it means that just whenever the user is logged in show this button okay great 
now in here what I am going to do is to copy this style as well as the uh, basically as well as this lockout button we're gonna implement that for this uh, login button as well okay so in here it's vice versa okay if the user is logged in don't show this login button because it's already logged in and if not go ahead and return nothing okay great now as you can see here we have this session storage Oops, sorry we have this session storage here let's check it out so we are logged in and we could log out now so if I log out as you can see here it's getting disappeared and now as you can see here we have this login via Google so if I log in again now I am logged in so let's fix that right away what can we do okay first of all I'm gonna import use history hook from react router DOM and in here I'm gonna say const history is going to be use history call that right away now we can use this history variable in order to uh, change the URL okay so we could from uh, for example from login go to default okay great now whenever let's see in here whenever the user logged in user logged in changes what can we do here is to use this history so I'm going to say history dot push to forward slash okay great but just at the moment that the user logged in changes and the user logged in is true which means the user is logged in we want to go to uh, this uh, forward slash okay so in here I'm gonna say if user logged in go ahead and history dot push to forward slash okay great now if I refresh okay so there is a problem uh, use history was not found in the react router DOM okay uh, okay I forgot that we are using the react router DOM version 6 so I'm gonna say use uh, use navigate actually oops let's write it it's better okay so in here I'm gonna say use navigate and I'm gonna say navigate okay navigate uh, I don't think the push method is going to work on navigate so oops uh, what happened okay inside login it still says export import as use history was not found okay I fixed that bro um, okay 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 so what is the problem let's save that okay it's working now let's go to login and as you can see here there should be a bunch of errors so as you can see here navigate.push is not a function I knew it so let's say navigate uh, dot okay so what we have inside navigate now I already know all the answers to these questions because I already wrote this application it's ready the source code is ready and I'm just gonna teach you okay but I am going to teach you how to solve the problems and debug and all that kind of stuff as well okay so let's go ahead and say use navigate in react router DOM okay what do we have here now uh, as you can see here we have this use navigate tutorial which it seems to be great okay navigate and now you can see that we don't need to use any method we just need to call the path on navigate itself okay so as you can see here if I get rid of this push it should 
work great so let's go to log in okay so it says all right there is no problem all right i think it's working because as you can see here we have all this kind of information so we are logged in and that way we don't need to basically go to log in so our app is uh, working great right perfect now uh, one thing we need to do in here is to instead of this logout we have in here I just want to show you uh, instead of using this uh, we're going to use this logout inside this header we will be creating inside our application in the next sessions okay great so I hope you uh, enjoyed this video actually the source code is on my uh, next monitor uh, you can't see that of course but um, I don't like to just uh, make the code work in the first place okay I, I like to show you how can you uh, fix different bugs and errors and this is the way you're gonna uh, basically improve yourself in the world of programming and coding and all that kind of stuff okay so that's it guys that's for this video i hope you enjoyed it uh don't forget to subscribe leave a like and uh as always if you had any questions just feel free to ask in the comment section below i'll, I'll respond them quickly as quickly as i can so uh prepare yourself for the next video in which we are going to create another great um, UI using Tailwind CSS for our different posts and all that kind of stuff, okay? So take care and have a great night.